this edition of the study we started yesterday on the exalted church uh, I remember what we shared yesterday even before we pray I just want to say this to you what you gaze at what you reflect on what you meditate on and what you say you become Elohim asked Jeremiah what do you see and then Jeremiah told him he said you saw well you see that church has been afflicted with a Satan sin consciousness. We've been, you know, in many parts of the world, if you want to ask people to pray, just mention Satan, mention demons. People begin to scream, scream, pray, because their hearts and minds are filled with Satan consciousness. People are more conscious of sin and iniquity than righteousness and what is right. And it's called sin consciousness. That's why we say to parents, every parent everywhere, please speak life over your children. Prophesy life over them. Declare life. Is it that they don't have issues to deal with? They have issues to deal with. Deal with those issues in love. Because training is not just speaking things to destroy their destiny. The word of parents are strong and powerful. They can define and they can destroy a future. So, the same way the church of Yeshua there has been this thing Satan has injected, whereby the church sees itself as weak, as ineffective, as uh, just, uh, you know, uh, float some and jet some, as because Satan in the fourth century foisted a concept of church that is a deviation from the biblical concept. And that deviation led the church to think organizationally, to think in terms of ABC, attendance into a building, to generate cash for purpose of building more buildings. So that ABC churchianity model, because it is weak and it cannot carry power. You know what? The result is that you have some big congregations that are 20,000, 30,000 in certain big cities, yet there's no impact of them in the city because they are inward bound. They are looking at the stage where the man of God stays to stage his performance. And that theater model of churchianity can never move the church. And that's why the Lord is bringing forth what he's sharing with us. And I urge you to all listen. Remember yesterday, the Lord gave us some tips. We cannot complete it now. We cannot recap it all. But remember Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13 to 19. The encounter upon this rock, the revelation of the divinity of Yeshua. Yeshua says, I'll build my church. Once you have that revelation, you are part of his church. Once you confess his lordship, you are part of that church. And he says, you give us the keys of the kingdom. That whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on earth is lose in heaven. Not just binding and losing demons, but binding and losing everything. Every kind of bondage, you know, behavior, character, you know, finances, everything. Success in whatever we are sent to do. You know, souls to, to be reconciled to him. That's why prayer should precede evangelism. <clears throat> and prayer should precede everything in your business. You should raise an altar to the Lord in your business. Abraham was known for any movement the Lord gave to him, he raised an altar. Go and check the story of Abraham. He raised altars. Altars are connecting points between heaven and an earth. They are connections between where you are and the throne of grace. You should have intentionally raise altars, lay your hands on the ground in your living room and dedicate it at an altar, yourself first on the uh, altar of the Lord and then your home, your office, your business, your ministry, dedicate it to the Lord. This should be intentional. But let's pray we go on today, Father. Just help us, Lord, to continue this ongoing study. Rouse us up. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, yesterday we told you that the spiritual prayer cabinet is a project the Lord said is now ripe for implementation at this time as a response to the issues of the day. There are many things that need to be resolved and they can only be resolved in prayer and in spiritual warfare. Brothers and sisters, in the realm of politics, the Lord has not sent this church to attack those in authority and abuse them. He has also not sent them to be so tied to those people and to be their fan and to take responsibility for their actions because if it is so, if a man 
lifts off his, the church will carry the baggage for generations to come. If you attack the church, the person who the Lord allowed to be in office, you are sinning against Elohim, who said in Romans chapter 13, 1 to 7, let every soul be subject to the higher powers. If you also exalt them that whatever they say is right and you endorse it, you have created an idol to yourself. And it's the immature church that does that. The kingdom church is going to be delivered from attacking, abusing, insulting, or trying to pull down, or also be so tight to agree with whatever any man says because he's in office. Brothers and sisters, the Lord has sent us to the world in our generation. The kingdom church is sent to the world in each generation. And that's why the Lord wants us to be people who can pray authoritative kingdom prayers based on understanding the dynamics of the gospel and then spiritually take the heart of the king, place it in the hand of Elohim. So the Elohim will turn the heart, the will, the emotion, the way he wants. And that is one of the things we ought to be doing. We should be able to lay hold of the heart, the mind, the will, the emotion of those in authority and pray with intensity to the point that even if they have planned to do something that is negative to the nation, over the night, they wake up in the morning, all that offense is gone. Brothers and sisters, he didn't ask us to stop there. The spiritual cabinet will also uphold all leading ministers of the gospel. In every country, in every continent, there are people the Lord has raised in a very special way to advance the gospel. They need to be upheld not just by their families and their individual ministries, but by other Christians who are part of the body. So in each country, we're going to identify who are the people the Lord is using mightily and to need to be uphold them because we know they're on the front line. And it's not just that, brothers and sisters, we also need to pray for the persecuted church, the church that is under intense persecution because some governments have locked up their land. They don't want... They, are, they have religion, national religions, so they want to safeguard it against invasion of the gospel. They know the gospel is powerful, so they've locked up their people. The new iron walls are governmental legislations and uh, religious you know, uh, decrees of people. They say they don't want the gospel. We got to break it down. We used to, to shell in a prayer and warfare to tear apart every rampart that is hindering the gospel. And all those who have been persecuted for their faith, we need to uphold them that they will not faint and that we will be able to generate compassion to support them in prayer and even provide to support them. Global Missions Board is already supporting some of those in one of the most difficult mission fields in the world. And brothers and sisters, not only that, we also need to understand that we need to pray for the church in each country to walk in love, walk in holiness, walk in unity, walk in service, walk in power, to complete the great commission in the consciousness that the end of all things is at hand. So if people were deferring, no, 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 uh, let me first marry, let me first do this, we need to pray that everybody will receive a consciousness that the time is now. Brothers and sisters, the global launch of the prayer and spiritual cabinet is on Thursday 13th. That's two days from now. It's going to be 10 p.m. London time, which is 11 o'clock South African time. It's 10 o'clock Ireland and 10 o'clock Nigerian time. And it is 4 p.m. Central time, 5 p.m. Eastern time. There was a little mistake on the poster. It's been going to be corrected. We thank God for the person that Lord used to point it out, Evangelist Bonnie. So, brothers and sisters, tomorrow on Zoom, join us. Let's be part of it. Let's pray. Let's worship. Let's also hear the counsel of the Lord. Let's just press into this global launch. And it does not end there. That global launch is the beginning of the process. Some work has been done. Some infrastructure has been laid. The groups have been created on Facebook. If you type the prayer and spiritual cabinet for. If your nation comes up, you join. If your continent comes up, you join. But there's still much work to be done. You know what? The, these resources, like these videos, need to be posted in all of them for people to know what we're about. We're not there to go and fight one another. We're not there going to go and fight governments or, or, or defend governments. We're there to pray kingdom prayer. We're going there on the lost side. And so, just to remind you of that, so that's for the, of, that's for the uh, launch. Now, 
Let's go on with what the Lord was saying. Let's continue. The Lord defined his church in equally strong terms as a catalyst of change and transformation that will coexist with the world on its assignment in the earth. Remember what I told you yesterday? One earth, two walls. The earth is one. This physical earth, the landmass that makes up the earth rim is one. Upon it, there is a world controlled by Satan. And then upon it, there is a world controlled by Yeshua. So, there is Satan's kingdom, the kingdom of darkness, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness in high places, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And the Bible says, while we are here on earth, we are not going to be wrestling against flesh and blood. Stop looking away from people who do things you don't like. Look at the spirit behind it. Look at what is, who will gain from that thing that the enemy is planning. It's still the enemy and his kingdom. So the Lord says we've got to be people who come to realize that Yeshua didn't make a mistake when he prayed to the Father in John 17. He said, listen, Father, as you sent me into the world, I finished my part. I want you to restore my glory. I am now sending them. What am I sending them to do? To go and complete what I began to do. There is part of it to do. I've completed my job. And then at the cross, he paid the price, bloodshed. I know this blood and water came out to touch the ground for the redemption of the earth rim also. Just as human beings are redeemed, men and brethren, the price was paid. And then he says, I'm sending them, Father. I don't, I'm not asking to bring them home, which of course will be more profitable for them. But I'm asking you to preserve them. Uh, you've known about what I've shared with you. 2004, the doctor said it goes over for me. But the Lord told me he has an assignment. It's not been done. I said, Satan, you can't take me out. Because the Lord has a reason why he created and redeemed this vessel. Brothers and sisters, you can't be taken out by the enemy. He doesn't have such right. He doesn't have such power to take you out. He has no capacity in that regard. The one who created you, the one who called you, has sent you an assignment. And listen to this, I don't care how much fire seems to be raging around you, you will overcome. You will be the last person standing and you will fulfill the purpose of Elohim for your life. The Lord is going to intervene in the situation about your health, in the situation about your finances, in the situation about your job or business or whatever. Because he gives a location for assignments. If you take your assignment and refuse your allocation, it's religion. And if you want the allocation of resources without accepting your assignment, that's covetousness. The Lord wants balance. And so if you accept your assignment in the air trip, the Lord will give you the fullness of allocation, including health, strength, wealth, for the purpose for his kingdom is spread abroad through prosperity. And I'm not talking about prosperity for eating and drinking for your belly. I'm talking about the resources the Lord gives to you for his work. So, Father, I'll just help us today by your spirit to continue what you began to tell us yesterday. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. So, in Matthew chapter 5, Yeshua describing his church. And listen, don't be tired. we got to understand the identity of the church from an Elohim point of view, not Satan's point of view. So speaking to us about what his church will be in each generation, Yeshua said in Matthew 5, 13, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savour, where we shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out to be trodden under foot of men. Now look at he spent more time in talking about what happens when we refuse to be salt. He said, we'll be cast out to be trodden in the food. Isn't that what is happening in several nations of the world? Governors, police commissioners, senators, representatives. In several nations of the world, presidents have no regard for church. You know why? Because the church refused to discover what it meant to be salt. And so they are cast aside. Policies are made, whether church likes it or not. Church is being trampled all over the world. And the Lord says there's a generation that will rise up and they will mature and they'll begin to, de de to they'll begin to ask questions. You know, in, in some of the third world nations, if even if a father is killed, the mom will not tell the children because they are young, lest they're exposed to danger when they speak on advice and he waits for them. 
They get to 18 or 19 or 20. They come out of university. He said, come, mom, let me tell you, my son, your dad was killed in the farm by that man there. Mom, I didn't tell him, well, what did you to grow up? And then that, that young person grows up knowing what transpired. In the same way, the church is now at a place, the Lord say, maturity has come, and we need to know who we are, we need to know what the enemy has tried to do, and we need to make sure we set it aside, so that the church will not be cast aside. This idea of anybody, every governor, every mayor can just call church leaders together and berate them, abuse them, or take, take some little money, throw at them, and they, they struggle among themselves, and they do whatever corruption, they can't talk because they've already been compromised, that era, the Lord says, is going. There's a generation of Christians that are maturing in this generation. They are not bound by denominational hang-ups. They love the Lord. They love their church families. But they know there's something bigger than where they are. They are not members of Arise. They are members of Yeshua. They are not members of Church AB. They are members of Yeshua. And we who are ministers should be able to tell them the body is one. And if we don't tell them we are creating divisions intentionally, it creates problems. So a generation is arising that will try to, that will ask the Lord, what does it mean that we are the salt of the earth? Let me give you some, what the Lord told me. Salt, number one, is a catalyst of change. It's an agent of change and transformation relative to what it is applied to. For instance, food. You prepare a pot full of condiments. If there's no salt, is flat, tasteless. They put a tincture of salt, what a few pennies or a penny, into that same pot. It brings out the flavor. Brothers and sisters, the Lord says that his church was placed on earth not just to be preserved from evil, but to be a catalyst to transform evil. So it is an agent which brings forth flavor or taste. So the, the mature kingdom church is planted in each community, each city, each state, each region, each province, and each nation. And the earth ring to bring forth the original redemptive plan of Elohim for people of the area. There's something the Lord wired in every people group. Some good things that are for the good of the entire human race. But what sin has done is that those qualities, Satan has corrupted them and people are now using them to kill others, to take their property, to advance their own frontiers, you know, to, to winner takes all, you know, uh, stronger takes over the property of the wicked, whether it's land or gold or silver. Remember what happened in the city of Kilgo when people came and took bags of $1 bills and threw it in the air as people rushed. They say, sign, sign, sign. They sign away their land for other people to take and exploit the oil that they knew was there. That's what happens without the gospel. People are pristine. People are, you know, do all kinds of things. So but the Lord say, hey, I've placed my church on earth to release kingdom virtue that will change the heart of people, change the mindset of people, so that what the Lord gave to them as capacity or grace or gifts or callings will come forth. Those qualities will come forth for the benefit of all humanity. There is no people group on earth, including the undiscovered tribes in the Amazon basin of Brazil. There is no people group on earth that don't have some good qualities Elohim put in them. It is sin that has distorted it. And those qualities are for good. Yeah, those who have grace for music, grace for drama, grace for, you know, uh, 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 speaking words that can stir up, grace for, you know, going across borders, going to discover new things. There are people who have grace for all things. And if they are redeemed with the blood of the Lamb, if those things are changed through the change of people, through the church, you know what? Those qualities will come out. And the negative parts of the qualities will be taken away by transformation. So the Lord wants us to impact individual, individual people, families, and from them, their neighborhood and their communities, so that citizens or who are serving Satan become citizens of the kingdom, as Colossians 1, 12 to 14 says, and they are transformed further to become disciples of Yeshua. Now, salt also is a preservative. Before 
technology of refrigerators came into being, if you wanted to preserve fish or meat, all you need is bat it in salt, put it out in the sun for maybe three weeks. It will cure it. And after it is cured, that fish or meat can stay for a year or two and can never go bad because there will be no jam can then be able to corrupt it and get rotten. In the same way, say salt is a preservative. We are to preserve the land in which we are planted. The things that will have brought destruction upon the land. By our being on the land, we are supposed to engage with the land. We are not supposed to just behave as if it doesn't matter. They can, anything can happen. No. There are things happening. Armed robbery, carjacking, hijackings, you know, prostitution, evil, all kinds of things. And COVID-19, come. We are not supposed to be indifferent. There's a sin called indifference. We're not even supposed to begin to laugh. Uh -huh. Yes, God is judging them. And we begin to talk it unadvisedly that way. We only end up closing the hearts of people. What are we supposed to do? Assault in the community where the Lord planted us. In the city, in the state, in the nation. What are we supposed to do? Number one, we are to have we are to have understanding of the unbiased history of that community, city, state, or nation. Unbiased. Remember, throughout history, listen to this. The conquerors write history. So when you are reading history from the point of the conquerors, you are missing it already. What are the people who were conquered? What is their history? So that's why we need to go beyond claims of people, flowery claims, to check in by the Spirit, Lord, what is the foundation? And the Lord will show us, and there are some impartial works that will give us further in research to discover the foundations, the history of communities, cities, states, and nation. Number two, we need to intentionally deal with the 40 foundations of those city, uh, communities, cities, states, and nations through the ministry of prayer and spiritual warfare. And what does that mean? The book of Psalm 11 verse 3 says, If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The righteous can do pretty much. They have 40 foundation. What do we do? We take the blood of the Lamb by faith. Remember the key of the authority of the name of Yeshua and the power of the blood. We take those two keys to apply on the land on which the church is, the land, the community, the city, the state, the nation. We begin to, everything we discover by research, whether it's blood guiltiness, whether it's greed and covetousness, whatever historic sins that are committed, we take the authority of the name of Yeshua to assess heaven for mercy. We take the power of the blood to declare upon the earth to dissolve every speaking. Because blood, as we've told you, those who watch this program, blood is life. So if somebody terminates life that maybe will have been for 70 years, terminates it at 37 from that 37 to 70 will be a, could be a speaking of the blood demanding vengeance. And so there are many communities that are hot in the atmosphere because of so much blood that is screaming, calling upon Elohim for vengeance. And it, don't say it doesn't concern you. If there's a covering cast over your land, it concerns the church also. So by prayer and supplication and spiritual warfare, we take the blood of the Lamb, we take the authority of the name of Yeshua to deal with those foundations, but we cannot deal with them except we first stand on behalf of the land to acknowledge the sins of the past, like Daniel in Daniel 9 and 10. He stood for his people as if it was him. Abraham stood in the gap between him and Lot's uh, destiny. We need to stand in the gap to pray, and not one day prayer, to pray continually, declare the blood for mercy, the blood that will speak better things than the blood that have been shed upon the land, and all the historic evils that are done. We need to do that continually. Number three, we need to be in persistent intercession for divine mercy concerning every evil visitation, whether it's COVID-19. We cannot assume indifference. That's why we have the Global Prayer Task Force to degrade and eliminate coronavirus because the church needs to be involved. We don't need to lock our hearts and do as if it doesn't concern us because maybe no member of the family has been infected. Brothers and sisters, Second Chronicles 7 says from verse 13, If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, if I send pestilence among my people, if my people 
which are called by my name, not all the cities of the nation. It's good to have a national door of prayer in your country. Everybody, all cultists come. Evil people come. Everybody, religious people come. Christ kingdom citizens come. Okay, that's fine. That's all. It's politics, okay? And leaders can exploit it. But I'm talking about the law says, I have a remnant in every land. My people, which are called by my name. What should we say we should do? One, humble ourselves. Two, pray. Three, seek my face. Seeking the face of the Lord could be a one-off thing. It could be a year-long thing. It could be a seven-year thing. It should be persistent. Pray. One, humble ourselves. Two, pray. Three, seek his face. Then four, turn from their wicked ways. The sin of a church in a land will always count more than the sin of a people before Elohim. Because judgment must begin at the house of Elohim. And when a church is not working in unity, not working in love, not working in holiness, not working in serving one another, when church is filled with people who are trying to undercut, trying to see how they place thought, how they will, you know, will withstand anything that is not from them, is from another person, they think is from that person, and they are just trying to pull it down or sabotage it. When a church is working that way, it loses the capacity to bring change. It's wickedness. So when church turns from their wicked way, say then Elohim says, then I will hear from heaven. Two, I will forgive their sin. Three, I will heal their land. Brothers and sisters, let nobody confuse you. Every land can be healed of the things that ail it. Land can be healed. It depends on what the church chooses to do or not do. And if the church has to do it, we have to be from position of strength in the righteousness we have in Yeshua HaMashiach. And so the global uh, prayer and spiritual cabinet is going to encourage brethren across the world. Take responsibility for your community, for your city, for your state, for your nation. Take responsibility and persist until change comes. Give him no rest, Elohim, until he answers. And this is so important. Then that Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give a light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It's so clear. The church in any community, in any city, in any state, in any nation is to show the light of Yeshua and the kingdom to the world by just how we live. Not in fakery, not in put on, not in cosmetics, just by the way we live, just being who we, he called us to be in everyday life, in every situation. You know, so the Lord says, even in the midst of gross darkness of sin and evil, Based on selfishness, the church can arise because the kingdom is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And the Bible tells us that in the kingdom, it's more blessed to give than to receive. The kingdom is a pouring out kingdom. It's a giving kingdom. It's a kingdom where people are invested in pouring out. And the Lord says we have a kingdom life that is superior to that of the world. The world is selfish, self-centered. The world is covetous. The world is evil. And the Lord says, hey, be selfless. Be loving. Be caring. Be compassionate. Be kind. Be merciful. The Lord is saying, live selflessly. Serving Elohim. Serving each other. Serving the community. He said, that will release light. People will see. You see, the people of the world are uh, utilitarian. Utilitarian means uh, whatever works, they are for it. The people of the world are ever looking for what works. You see, today, the people of the Eastern religion of yoga are almost taking over many parts of the world because the world is bored with all their hunt for pleasure. They are not finding anything, and the Eastern religion is, affect, is offering them the religion of yoga, that if you do it, you are going to have inner peace. You know what? And people of the Western world are going that way. 
is because the church has not discovered that we carry some beautiful kingdom properties. And the Lord says, let our light, he's not asked us to go and hide in a corner. He's asked us to be on the bushel so that the people will see the life of the kingdom, the culture of the kingdom in the church, how we do, how we relate to one another, how we are filled with the joy of the Lord, righteousness and peace and shalom and joy in the Holy Ghost and the world looking for happiness, not finding it, seeing the people who are full of joy, they wonder what's the reason for the hope in them. They will draw near. Looking for the people who are not living the way they are living. You know, I love that beautiful thing. Prophet Jeremiah released how Christians, you know, oh, it is so sad. Christians who will post profound things on Facebook, you will even enjoy. Give it to the next week. They post some terrible, ugly Things that should not once be named among saints. And they expect Christians to endorse them in their evil. People who display their flesh. And what Apostle Ron said, you know, when you tell people the truth, so they, don't, they won't go to hell. How are we seeing people live anyhow? They marry and give in marriage. They take this one, fill this one, drop this one, take this one. See, you see somebody, a mature person is in the fourth, fifth, sixth marriage. What's going on? And nobody will say. Everybody will hail them for the next conquest they've conquered. Brothers and sisters, these things, they must be standards in the kingdom. We should remember that people are seeing us and our life speaks volume. And the law says we should be so radical in the way kingdom life and kingdom culture is in us that when the people of the world, in their negative culture, they see the superiority of the kingdom, they are drawn. Isaiah 60 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. This is what is happening now. And gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall rise upon thee, the glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Gentiles shall come. If we begin to live out these things, the Gentiles shall come. They will see, they will know. Brothers and sisters, that's why the Lord wants us to know that we have works to be done. Through prayer, through spiritual warfare, through living the life, we can affect our generation. So this is a call out to challenge us to stop being in a corner, being under the bushel. That's why, that's why churchianity is so dangerous. People get into a building, on certain holidays, for two hours, three hours, they have a beautiful kingdom experience. Laughter, joy, hugging, you know, sharing, all that for two hours, three hours inside a building. After which everybody goes into a car park and drives home. What of the community? What of the place in which we are planted? And the Lord said, begin to see the community as your assignment. Every church, every congregation rather, should begin to see the community as its assignment. Begin to ask the Lord, Lord, in what way do you want to use us to affect this community? In what way do you want us to catalyze change in this community? If there is crime in the area, we need to pray until crime is reduced and eliminated. If there is prostitution around in the community, we need to pray until it's eliminated. If there is, you know, knife crime, young people stabbing each other, we need to pray until it's eliminated. The father is still able to send his angels, innumerable company, to flush out evil in the land. We shouldn't be indifferent. We shouldn't be off base. We shouldn't be uninvolved. The Lord said we are the salt. We are the light. He planted us intentionally on earth that through us, he doesn't do things from heaven again. He does it through us. We are his mobile temples. I want to encourage you to go to www.kingdombooksclub.com. Download the book, 16 Glorious Truths, that talks about your identity as an individual. 16 Glorious Truths will bless your heart. It's free of charge. Download it and study it. Communities, I want to encourage congregations. Download all the other ones, strategic kingdom leadership, some of the other courses that talk about our responsibility to the community, download them and teach the people. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is not happy that we drive to a car park, enter the building after that we go. 
and the community is the way it is. We got to engage. We got to intentionally engage. And we can't engage until we are truly the salt. We are truly the light. And we have something to offer. Then we go to invade the community in a beautiful way. In a way that the Lord spoke about in the, uh, Matthew chapter 13. He, talk, he spoke about the kingdom of Elohim. is like leaven which a woman hid in measures of law until all was leavened. We are to take kingdom culture to our communities, and from there, the whole community is positively infected with kingdom culture transformation. We're going to talk about some aspects of this tomorrow in a more detailed way. We are going somewhere. The Lord wants to challenge us in these five broadcasts or so to know that he has given us an assignment, and that assignment, if we keep staying inside doors within only our Christian community, we won't get far. That's why I was very excited to see Apostle Ron go forth to, to get those short, beautiful things. Uh, because unbelievers don't have time for long messages. Those short six minutes and how the Lord is using it to touch lives, even people who were in very terrible states now returning to him. Over almost 40,000 responses out of that and 2.3 million and going to 3 million soon by the grace of Lord and more. We are saying that we need to reach out. Let's break boundaries. Let's break down the walls of partition and engage with the world. And we have assignment with the world. So the global prayer spiritual cabinet for each nation is going to also pray into this dimension. Pray for those in authority. That their heart, their mind, their will, their emotion will be in the hand of the Lord who will turn it the way he wants. Pray for all of them, executive, legislative, you know, so, uh, judiciary. Pray also for prominent people in the land who are people of influence. Pray for leaders of the gospel in all the nation. And pray also that the church will arise from sleep. Will awake from sleep, will arise from slumber. The church will become what the Lord wants it to be, and the church will launch out to represent the king and will become the embassies of the kingdom wherever it's planted. Brothers and sisters, get ready for tomorrow. The things we're going to be sharing tomorrow and on Thursday morning and Thursday evening, you just have no idea what the Lord will do. Remember that we have an assignment by the grace of the Lord. And we're going to close here. Remember, we have an assignment by His grace. Thursday, we're going to meet for the lunch. And I urge you to come with us on Zoom. The posters are out. And you can see it on my, on my page. It's also my banner on my Facebook. Take the Zoom detail there. It's 5 o'clock Eastern Time, USA. 4 o'clock Central Time. London, Island, Nigeria, 10 p.m. South Africa, 11 p.m. Those in Middle Eastern Asia, you can take your bearing from there. And brothers and sisters, let's rise up. This is not about any church, any network, any fellowship. It's about the church of Yeshua rising in the dimension of his identity and advancing to do the work and finish it so that the end comes upon us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for speaking to us. I know this challenge, your people are not going to let it fall on the ground. Lord, by yourself, do what only you can do. By yourself, transform, renew, change us, challenge us, and unleash us to the world. That your name may be honored and glorified. We give you all praise. Let these words be sealed in the blood of the Lamb, inside the heart and mind of your people. That none of your people will let it drop on the ground. We debar the demons that fly to pluck out what was sown, that they will not operate in Yeshua's name, we pray, amen and amen. We have a few bad days. We have um, Renia Lomote, Peggy Irwin, Sophia Franklin Maras, Pamela Brinkley, Wale Kayugira, Apostle Head, Michael Pileki Desmond, Crotters, dear Lawrence, and dear Wallace and Madeline Amazon. The bad days are today. By the grace of the Lord, we're going to pray for them on daybreak with the king. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, take this thing seriously. Share this video. I want to thank the Lord for yesterday. It was awesome. The number of shares, we have not seen it like that in recent times. It was people took hold. Please do likewise. All the videos in this series, 
is going to quicken the church from what the Lord shows. The church will rise and advance. So share it, watch it, understand it, keep yourself ready. Thursday we see. Tomorrow we continue this study on the exalted church. Okay? Uh, thank you so much, Eli, for being with us.